Okay, so today we're going to talk about charcoal. Anybody have charcoal supplies with them? Nice. You too, King? Good job. Heather Rose, what about you guys? You guys are you gonna be working with us in charcoal today? Very good. Okay, so as we're waiting for everyone to, to get logged in, there's different kinds of charcoal. Like this right here. This is vine charcoal, which is very brittle, easy to crack, um, and it's very light. It's very light. So if you take a look at it, it's great for laying down a base foundation. It's, it's considered willow or vine. It's great if you want to cover a large area and, and do it quickly. It's easy to spread around. Now, the thing about charcoal is you can't be afraid to get dirty because it will get on your hands. It'll get all over the place. Um, we also have compressed charcoal. Compressed charcoal, good job. Compressed charcoal is, um, it's much darker and dense than vine charcoal. But it, it, it can make great marks. And if you learn how to control it, it can make a dark mark. And it can do a very fine light mark. But it's all a matter of, of how much control and pressure you use. Generally, I will sharpen the point of this like a sharp, like a pencil. Um, it's hard to find a pencil sharpener that will take these. Usually I use a blade and I would trim it down and make a point. But this is one of my favorite pieces of charcoal. And that's compressed. And I also have, it's like a pastel charcoal, which is this big, real hunky thing. And this, it's like compressed, but it's real powdery, like chalk. And what I like about this is, like the compressed, you can go from a thin edge, and as you're still drawing, come to a wide edge. Once again, this is, all about control about and remember i talked about dirty your hands get real dirty real fast and then also we have the charcoal pencil now what the charcoal pencil is good for is for detail so if you are trying to get in and and you want to get in to get fine detail, the charcoal pencil will allow you to do that. And then also what's very good to have around is an eraser, a needable eraser preferably. Looks like silly putty or a little block. It's kind of rubbery. Very nice.
I could not find my kneadable eraser, so I'm going to have to make do. And also a shemi, a shemi or a paper towel. Okay, so charcoal drying, charcoal drying is one of my favorite. And um, I generally draw, I draw a, a lot of people. And I'll be in a class where we do figure drawing. So sometimes we'll do people with clothes or without, and we study the human figure. Because you need to understand where someone's shoulders are, where their knees are, what's happening underneath your jacket or shirt or a blouse or a robe. And I generally work on the 18 by 24 piece of paper. Any of you have newsprint? Wow, that's great. If you get newsprint, smooth newsprint, it's, it's good because you can practice and practice and it's not really expensive and it'll save you a lot of money. So, when I'm drawing, and we're gonna talk about figure drawing. Um, we can practice, focus on the head or we can focus on the whole body. The best way to practice figure drawing is to get uh, a magazine, like a fashion magazine, um, or something that you can study from. Or you can pick something like, for practice, something like this, just a regular bottle. Remember earlier, the other class, I talked about uh, lamps and bottles. Just draw whatever's around you. So in figure drawing, your character is generally eight to 10 heads high. So we're gonna take a look at this character. So the first thing I generally start out with is I'll take a look at, at their head and what angle their head is on. I generally use compressed charcoal. So this character, her head's about this angle. Then you also wanna get her gesture. So the gesture is what's the motion of her body? What is she doing? So she's kind of one shoulders up, one shoulders down, kind of look at that angle. And then, so she's kind of her, this hip is higher than that hip. So that means that her weight is on this leg. Generally, it's kind of an odd position because generally when someone stands, if this shoulder is higher, there's a juxtaposition where there's a contrapostal pose going on where there's usually an opposite twist. And the person's weight is generally gonna be on this leg. Daryl, are you able to move your drawing up a little? Oh, so perfect. right now, if you take a look, since her hips are opposite, usually the hip opposite of the shoulder is gonna be the one with the weight. You generally don't see, if you take a look at this drawing, you generally don't see someone with their shoulder and hip both going in the same direction. Usually if someone's standing, they'll have an attitude. And this pose does give it an attitude. So if we want, you're an artist, you can change it if you want. So we're gonna come in and we're like, okay, well, You could change it and say, okay, well, I want her hip to be on that side.
And as an artist, you can make a choice of, well, you know, most often when you're standing with your hands on your hip, your hand is going to be on that higher hip side. And then we, we'll make her have her roses in this hand. Now, when you're looking at a figure and you're drawing, there's lots to take into effect. So with charcoal drawing, if you want to, supposedly, if you want to do a head study, do you guys remember the proportions of a head? So a, a person's head when you're looking at the like a profile of a person, you want to see if you could catch that angle. Um, let me give you a couple of examples. Scott, do you have um, those those images I sent you? Yes. If you could cue them up and there's, I'll show them an idea of what I'm talking in regard to charcoal drawing and figures. So here's a ballerina. Now this was done on an 18, a piece of paper about the size I have on my desk right now. So that's 18 by 24. And if you take a look, that's predominantly done in the compressed charcoal. And the charcoal can be used to do a lot of, the same piece of charcoal can be used for shading, can be for your de definite lines. Um, next drawing, please. Here's a soldier. I got that. This was uh, a 20 minute pose. So we'd have people come in dressed in costume and there would be standing here for 20 minutes. I got done a little early, so I put a little fish in his canteen. I don't know if you can see it. I got bored a bit. And, and so another thing about the drawing is by adding little details, like if you look at the edge of his pants, there's a seam. By adding little details, that gives a little more extra character to your drawing. Next drawing, please. This was a guy, he was dressed in a suit of armor. And this was a, a 30 minute pose. So if I was teaching you guys in person, we would bring in a model. I would like to bring a model in and they'd be dressed up in either a costume or a pirate's outfit and we would draw that. Next one, please. Same guy. Another 20 minute pose. I got bored, so I had him drinking out of a, a silly straw. Next one. Okay, so now we're getting into portraits and head studies. This was probably a two or three hour drawing. And if we, we look at it again, when you're doing something like this, you want to have strong lighting. Um, you want to have direction like if you're doing a still life so you'll have your person sitting down and if you have your person sitting down here you want light from one direction you want strong light from one direction so that it'll create those nice shadows that you can draw from. Next drawing, please. Here's another portrait. Once again, this is about a three hour drawing. And if you have a magazine, you could 
it's great for magazines. Or if you could take a picture, or Heather and Rose, if you guys want, you guys could try sitting for each other, and you one of you could take turns drawing each other. But just make sure you have a strong light so that it creates shadows in your picture. Next drawing. Here's another similar one, about a two to three hour pose. Next one. Oh, that's it. That was all okay. I received. And that's it. Yeah, I didn't send you the other one, Scott, just because I, the references weren't good enough. But charcoal is, is pretty versatile. Um, use print is a good way to go because it's smooth. You want something smooth. You want something smooth that you can blend things on. Um, they have different types. They have rough, which I generally stay away from. There's a website called dickblick.com. And they have some of the best prices on art materials. So if you're looking for print and materials, it's, it's a good way to do it. Um, when you are charcoal drawing, how about a small piece because I know the 18 by 24. I also, there are different ways to draw. Some people use an easel when they're drawing figures or when they're painting. And then there's a horse. I prefer standing up when I'm drawing. Because when you stand up, you can use the your full arm. You're not kind of tied and restricted. And when you use your full arm, you can you can just you can just go. It's, it's, charcoal drawing is awesome. If you can get used to charcoal drawing as a medium, it, you're way above, you're way ahead of the crowd. I hated charcoal drawing in the beginning because it, it's messy. I don't like it. Um, but study people like in swimsuits and uh, shorts because you need to see his chest comes about here. So if I was to put muscles on him, there's his chest. If you want to give him abs, there's his abs. Or if you want to give him a big stomach, there's his stomach. If you want to put him in little shorts or put him in a dress, As an artist, you can do all of this. But charcoal is something to, to get used to. And you can even do, you can have a lot of fun with it. Did I mention I used to hate doing charcoal? I, I didn't like it at all. Because, but if you keep doing it, you could try to, you could try to, you'll get better at it. And the you could do amazing stuff with it. You could do, let's see, what can I do? Tater, do me a favor, turn sideways. Turn the other way. You got more lighting on the other side. There you go. Scott, can, can you highlight him real quick? There you go. All right, don't move. You're going to be the model for the next five to 10 minutes. Everybody draw Tater. All right. So, so what we do is I generally will start with the basic circle and then don't move. You can laugh, but don't move. Doing a good job, Brett. I appreciate you. Thank you for doing this. That's awesome. Okay, and then we're gonna come here. I'm gonna find, okay. You find your proportions. Don't forget about your proportions.
and then you look at the edge of his face and how far stuff is sticking out like how far is his lip behind his nose you're all looking at it's like measuring it's like building a a, a bridge and you're connecting the dots doing a good job I appreciate it, man thank you I appreciate you good job would like to share as soon as we're done with Tater's posing. Absolutely. Dude, this is cool. I like this. This this is a great example. This is a very good example. So when I'm drawing the bottom of his ear, I'm looking at the bottom of his ear, how far it is from the corner of his eye right here. I'm looking at the bottom of the ear. But before I draw that, I want to see how high it is from the back of his nose. So, right, if you draw a line from the back of his nose to his ear, it's not at the bottom, but it's just a little above it. And that's how you start measuring stuff. You start, you have to start somewhere. So, you just kind of take a guesstimate from first. Okay, so now I'm going up by his forehead and I'm going up to his hair. Okay, so look at his hair. Don't draw the single hairs, draw his hair as a shape. So he's got this line coming here. He's got a curl there and it comes back to this way. Then below this, right here on the front edge, almost middle of his forehead to his eyebrow, his hair comes out right here. And just look at the whole thing as a shape. Don't try to do the individual hairs because then you'll get too caught up in the details and it could throw you off. Got his chin. Now, if you take a look at his chin, you notice there isn't a line, but there's a line being, it's being suggested by the shadow. So there's no straight line on his cheek like that. It, it's his cheekbone. It's it's a soft shadow. So pay attention because that's where some people get messed up. They get confused where they see something, but they're not sure how to put it down. So they draw a line. There's a little bit of shadowing on the inside corner of his eye and on the outside. Got his collar. Now, if I want to go, a lot of times if you're doing a drawing too, and if you really want to make that drawing look pop, like focus on something like his eyes. But don't put too many eyelashes on him because when you put too many eyelashes on a, like I told you earlier, on a male character, it makes them look too, too, too much like a, a girl, not unless that's what you're going for. Now for his hair, if you want to get a little texture to his hair, you can add a little texture, but most of it's just shading. Most of it's just going to be shading that in and then following the lines of that. Because you're going to see big clumps of, of dark areas, and then you're going to have about three different values. Some dark areas, and then a whole bunch of medium, and then a bunch of light areas. Tater, thank you very much, brother. Good job. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Tater, our model. Let's give him a hand. All right. Thank you, Tater. So anybody care to share their drawing of Tater? He would like to share. All right. How you doing, King? Well, I like Tater. Don't be too offended when you see my drawing. I'm kind of stuck in the amateur 
atomic level right now? No. Mm -hmm. All right. Good job. No, man, you, you're, you're, hey, all we can ask is that you do the best that you can. And that's how you learn. I, I appreciate you for, for trying it. Heather Rose, yes, please. I would love to see what you guys have. Um, here's what I have. Nice. Nice. Good job. Good job. I like it. I like it. But so I have to say I, I have a bit of advantage because I've been doing this for a while. So don't you know you guys did very well, you know. And thank you, Tater, for our model, because I didn't think about that until last moment. And I'm looking at Tater, I'm like, you know, it'd be great for everybody to just, you know draw each other so good job keen anybody else want to share okay so i will i will post for you for about 10 minutes i will be your next model so then that way everyone can draw you better not be offended when you see my drawing. Oh no, trust me. I, I, I'm, I'm glad Tater's not offended by my drawing. So, okay. All right, everybody. So do you want a, a front view or do you want a profile? You know what? I'll do profile because it'll be easier. All right. I know you're not used to drawing such a handsome guy. I know, I know. It's 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 okay. Hold on. How's my hair? All right, we good. All right, all right. So, Alexa, start timer. Ten minutes. All right, ten minutes, everybody. All right. Show me how much you like me or don't like me. Let's see what you guys got. Can I go first? Keen, Keen wanted to go first. Sure. Hey, hey. Everyone looks mad in this one, That's including awesome. the portrait. That's awesome. And I think That's I put a bit too much shade. That's awesome. Good job, Keen. All right, who's next? Oh, look at everybody watching. All right. Um, here's mine. Very, look at you, and you even got the Chuck Jones in the background. Good job. Nice. Here's mine. I, um, I still had extra time, so I drew Bugs Bunny. And well, yeah, and, you, and you, you even got the, the design on my shirt, too. I like it. Thank you. Good job. All right, Thank who's you. next? Thank you. All right, Tater, what you got? Uh, there, there, there was an attempt. Hey, it's charcoal because I'm a coward, but job. yeah. Good job. Thank you. Here's Cat. Hey, Cat. Um, here's my kind of sort of finished one. All right. Um, Thank you. I like it. A couple attempts that nice. didn't work. Nice. No, well, you're 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 trying, and the more you try, you learn every every time you do it. Here's Avery. Hey, Avery. Okay, so you're gonna have to give me a second to position it because the thing is backwards. Oh my gosh. No problem. Okay. There you go. There you go. Okay. Cool. Good. Nice. That's okay. awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Here's Jay. How's it going, Jay? Hello. Um, so I apologize in advance. I can't portions, and it doesn't really look like Daryl. But no yeah. worries. You know, but but see, this is why we practice, right? That's part of it. You know, I lo I, I love that you guys are sharing, and that's what I want. Anybody else? All right, cool. Good job. If you want, 
you can send um, send those to Scott. Email those to Scott. I'd love to have a copy of this. Just to say, yeah, look how much my students like me. No, I'm kidding. No, you guys did a good job. So, so here, let me give you a, a little feedback on, on your sizes. In my opinion, bigger is better. So if you are gonna draw, use, use your paper. You know, you got so much paper on there. You don't have to, because if you go down here like this, no, it's really small and, and you have to get really tight in there. You know, if you're trying to save time and you got a big project, that works but you got charcoal you got a nice big beautiful piece of paper in front of you go at it just don't let it stop you remember i told you get that angle of the face so what i generally start is i, I make the cranium and i'll generally get the angle of that face in now my my challenge is personally is my angle sometimes i don't make it far back enough in that angle sometimes this is my own challenge i have with myself is i sometimes make that angle too straight but make that angle fall back because all our faces generally fall back in a slight angle now remember when you're doing a head your eyes are going to be about halfway then halfway between those that's going to be your nose Halfway between that, that's generally the bottom lip. It depends, but those are your general proportions. So when you're drawing the head, if you keep those things in mind, that the, the, the mouth can move a little bit. Some people have a, a longer jaw, a shorter jaw, but these are just general rules. So, That's how I generally will start out a face. I got my cranium and, I, and you wanna get that angle. Like when I first started drawing Tater, I was trying to find that angle of how far or back or forward his face comes. And then I'll find a chin. You need a starting point. So I would come here and then I'd look about halfway. Okay, his eyes are gonna be about here. Now your eyes, generally don't come all the way to the edge because you have this little point this little space between the the edge of your nose into the corner of the eye so it's going to fall back somewhere here and if you think of the eye from the side view it's almost like a letter a so it's almost like an a so his eye or anyone's eye generally, if his eyes is about here, it's gonna be about in that position. The nose, if that's the bottom of his chin, is gonna be halfway. So that's generally the bottom of the nose. And if you want the person to have a big nose or a small nose, that's up to you. And your nose generally has a little tip up. It doesn't go straight out. It generally comes up just a bit, generally. Um, sometimes though, you have someone with a big nose and the nose could actually come down. Depends on the person. Depends on the person. Halfway between that. I'm going to make that the middle of the mouth. Now, if it's a girl, if it's a female, you generally, the lips come out a little more than a male. Or, it, like, again, it all depends on the, the person. Now, the corner of the mouth, so if you're doing the top lip, the, the top lip comes out on an angle then the bottom lip.
So the top edge of the lip is generally further out than that bottom edge. And once again, it's all following that front angle of the face. It's getting a little messy. So going back, just start out generic, Circle, hedge, edge of the face, and the chin. Now, if it's a, if you're trying to do like a superhero character or, or a, a guy generally has a stronger jaw versus a female, a girl will have a, a softer jaw. It won't be as angular. It'll be softer. And you can get away just by putting your those key marks in. By putting those key marks in, you can already start seeing, okay, it's, it's forming a face. So I'm gonna go with the softer angle. And if it's a female, generally the neck will be a little slender and thinner. I'm gonna give her a little bit of a long nose and a little small nose. And like I said, when you're doing hair, if you're doing hair, like if I look at Liliana and Heather Rose, if I look at hair, I can look at your hair and I'm going to go, okay, I'm going to go with one of their hair. And it's all, you do shapes. Do it all in shapes so that it's it's all... And if you want, you can even just come out, put a couple of strands. If you want a little, you know, put a little curl in there, give it a little character. But you could add a couple of strands on it, but you just generally keep it, you know, simple shapes. Anybody have a question with working with charcoal? Now, if you take a look, my charcoal bite, since I've been drawing with it, has formed into a point. And that's when it, it makes it versatile because you could, if I want to go in for detail, I can. Or if I want to go in for a broad stroke, I can. That works great for elbows and knees, this broad stroke. Because if you're drawing someone's legs, and you get to their knee, It just you just come around. It's pretty charcoal is versatile. If you can get used to it, this you can do amazing stuff with this. Now, if you're wanting to do a finished piece, like a really nice piece, then you would do it on something like. Illustration board or illustration paper. Something with a little bit of tooth. If you want to, if you're going to do a finished piece and you're going to spend a lot of time on a portrait, not like a 10 minute drawing. Um, I don't have an example with me, but there's been drawings where it took me like six hours to do, and the person posed for six hours. And they took breaks, of course, but it's it's you know, Tater, you know how it like you got imagine sitting there for six hours but that's you know if we were in a class together i would hire people they would come in dressed like a pirate or a character from star wars a, a guy on a motorcycle and we would draw them and take our time so that you have a nice finished piece um and with charcoal it doesn't have to be serious You know, you can do a lot of great textures with charcoal. You know, have fun with it. You can. The shading ability of charcoal is quick, fast, and easy.
Here's my challenge to you guys. Here's my challenge to you guys. Draw a family member like we did today for the class. You can either do a profile or, or a side view, uh, excuse me, a front view, and, and, and see what you come up with. I'd, I'd like to see it. Um, you guys did a good job. And if you can, like I said, send your um, drawings to uh, Scott. Scott, can you shoot up your email real quick, please? I would love to have a copy of those. That was fun. You guys did a good job. But another thing to do to think about when you're drawing with charcoal is this this edge, this magic edge. This edge is magic in the sense that it can do this. There's a question, just yours or Tater Tots too? Do you, do you want them to send? I want any? everybody, if you want to send it to me, I would love to have it. Everybody. Everybody. But any of their artwork, correct? Uh, um, well, the, 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 all of it, all of it that we did today. Okay. If you want to share it, great. Thank you. But the, the, the ability for this to create the multitude of lines with this one piece. So from here, I can go. You could do so much with this one line, this one. It's, it's pretty versatile if you just, it's a matter of just learning to, to get used to it. But you got to get used to hands that look like this. I used to know someone that used to go in my class, they used to put gloves on before they would charcoal draw. That's how they didn't want to get, they were good. But to me, I'm like, this is part of the experience, drawing with charcoal. But yeah, it's... Um, it's one of my favorite mediums. The challenge was, though, just getting used to it. So we got about five minutes left. Anybody have any questions? Next week, um, I think we might. Hmm, what do you guys want to do next week? I was going to do ink wash, but... <coughs> It takes a while for it to dry and it's not as fast. We could do acrylics. Um, we could do inking. What, what would you guys like to do next week? What, do you have a question, Kat? Kat, raise your hand. Um, I would like to share. Okay. Um, sorry, I was gonna get my charger, but I'll share first. Um, here's a seal. Oh. Ink wash is, um, it's we pretty cat. No worries. Uh, hopefully she'll get back to us in time. Ink wash is cool. It, um, it's just basically, it's like watercolor, but you're just dealing in values of gray you're just doing in shades of gray um i suggest charcoal is pretty awesome i suggest just spending some time playing with it i didn't have an eraser but it's great for pulling out highlights um i believe ben is also doing charcoal this week so hopefully he I mean, he'll probably have a needed eraser with him but if you got time practice Practice either drawing people or, you know, like right across from me is a coffee cup. So now remember your ellipses. Ellipses are your friends. So as this ellipse moves down the page, I'm gonna it's gonna change angles. So when it gets further down, that's gonna be I'm gonna be able to see more of it. And the opposite is true. If it goes further up, I'm gonna see more of it. And if it came to my eye view, I would see basically just the side of it. So this, let's 
those are ellipses. So when you're drawing, which is very valuable, because when you're drawing an arm, when you're drawing a post, a lamp, those are all ellipses. But draw stuff around. Now, if you want to take my challenge, I really would like to see, you know, if Liliana and Heather Rose decided to draw each other, that'd be cool. If, you know, you want to draw your dog, if you're, you know, one of your parents, that'd be great. But kind of practice and then practice shading. Shading with charcoal, you know, can go from, this is compressed. So it can go from very light to dark, you know? And that's, you know, in that first, we, you know, we talked about, your, your basic shadows, you got your core shadow. You got your highlight. You got your cast shadow. And our light's coming from this direction. You know, so there's lots like this one little thing has gives you that much control. I wish I could draw all of you. Maybe one day we'll just spend the whole class. At the end of this month, we'll just you pick a medium, and you we'll just take turns drawing each other. We could do you could do a caricature, or you could do a serious one. You could do a cartoon version. Do it whatever you want. You have like a a fun day with that. But next week, maybe we'll do watercolor or ink wash. Um, do you guys have any preference? Do you guys have, because ink wash, you need India ink and like a few bottles of water. You add a certain amount of ink to each one and you make a different value. Or we could do watercolor. So, yeah, water. We'll probably do watercolor. It might be easier for everybody just because watercolor paints are easier to access and it's less time to set up. All right, before we take off, any questions, you guys? If you have questions, email me. Um, hopefully, you guys have all my, my email address. All right. I think we're done here then, folks. Thanks, Daryl. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.